Hey folks, this is Max. Welcome to another video. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to build the flow that is triggered when user's profile is updated. Now this is the third video in this mini series that I am working on. And uh, so the first one was when someone joins a company. So when someone, when users activated, uh, you can perform a number of tasks such as sending a message to Slack, sending an email. Um, the other video was when the person leaves the company. So when the user is deactivated, um, the video shows how to call a third party API. And then, so this video, this is when the user, um, user's profile is updated. So this is based on this idea of joiner, mover, lever. So again, joiner is someone, uh, when someone joins the company, so you need to do, again, give, give them access to applications and so on. Then mover, it's this video. So when, for example, a person changes their role in a company. And then the last one is again, um, lever when they leave a company. So you need to cancel their subscriptions, for example, transfer their files. Okay. So again, this is the more one. We're going to build a flow that is triggered when user's profile is updated. Okay. So let's click a new flow and let's give this a name user profile. Updated. We're going to click this option so we can see the flow history. Now, as always, um, how do we trigger the, uh, how we trigger a flow? Um, one of the most common ways is when an event occurs in the system. Of course, the other one is on schedule, but in this particular case, this is going to be an event and then we can search for it and then user profile updated. Okay. And so this is the user whose profile was updated. And right here, these are the change attributes. Okay, those are the fields that were changed. Okay, and next we're gonna use a compose card and we're going to say user profile attributes changed. And just, we're gonna just do it like this. So we're gonna keep it pretty sort of, I guess, straightforward. We're gonna get the attributes and then we're gonna send the message to Slack. So the idea is that maybe uh, if someone else changes um, if the manager changes a uh, user's profile, then maybe you can send a message to the user. Uh, hey, those were changed. Okay. And so then we're going to edit Slack. And we're going to say send message to channel. And then select the channels test. We're going to use the bot. And then select, just enable the emoji. So we're gonna take this and map to the text. This is going to be user profile. And we can always add a little emoji here. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong place. I wanna do it right here. Okay. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, and now we just need to enable the flow. Okay. And now we can go ahead and change. Uh, now these attributes, so again, if you change multiple attributes, they're going to come in as just a comma separated list. Uh, so we're not going to do anything else. Uh, of course, you can, you know, you can parse the list and you can separate. Uh, but for now, we're just going to get the attributes as this and send them to, uh, and send them to Slack. All right. So let's go to our user and just refresh the page. And now we're going to click edit and we're going to change. Uh, so again, changing the title. So this is an example when, again, the user may be uh, a, a user or an employee is uh, promoted or moved to different departments. So it's an awkward builder. And then maybe we also uh, going to change this to no code awesome group. And then we're going to change the just the manager's last name to green, just to, and then click save. And then let's see, go to our flow here. Now, it sometimes takes a little bit longer for the flow to get registered. So let's see here. Oh, actually it works. So this is, uh, this is the event. Now you can see here, change attributes. Again, it's just a comma separated uh, list. And then we're composing the message and then sending it to Slack. And then we can go right here. Uh, these are just some previous tests that I was running, uh, but this is the one right here. 
um, that was just sent. So we changed the manager, the title, and the uh, and the department. All right. Um, so that's that's all I wanted to show you. Now again, uh, we're sending the list uh, just as is. Now you can also add some additional logic, and because the profile has a lot of attributes, and maybe you're only interested in particular attributes. So you can actually track and see. Let's say you know ten attributes were changed, but you're only interested in particular five, just in general, and then you can see how they compare. So you look at the list of all the attributes change and you look at the list of the tracked attributes, uh, and then you can say, hey, if those attributes are included, then do something, right? Um, but again, in general, this is how uh, this works. Now, a very a common question that's being asked is like, hey, can you see the previous value? So the way it's set up right now, this event, you can't. Uh, it doesn't send the previous value. So the only option, and it just gets a little bit more complicated, is you have to keep track of all the previous values somewhere else. But of course, it gets more complicated to do it that way. Um, but anyhow, that's all I wanted to show you in this particular video. Again, this is mini series. I'm going to link the other two videos in every video in this three series uh, part section. Um, but um, again, I hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.